Bismillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa la alihi wa sahbihi wa la in the name of Allah may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon his final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his companions and all those who follow him until the day of judgment my dear beloved brothers and sisters uh, community members um, scholars administration of ISGH and all of our community members I ask Allah to make this gathering one that is blessed with his with his mercy one that is blessed with his approval and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open up our our hearts and our and our and our chest to <clears throat> to to bless us with extracting from our from our inner self uh, the goodness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, reserved for us. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless and guide uh, my tongue, inshallah ta'ala, so that I, I can, by His will and by His wisdom and His assistance, will be able to uh, convey uh, some words or share some uh, beneficial uh, knowledge. Um, and bi'idhnillah, God willing, May, may with this message, inshallah ta'ala, we, we find a sense of um, an increase, an increase in our, in our iman, an increase in our sense of hope, an increase in our um, reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and an increase in our, in our turning back to the book of Allah, in our, in our constant Turning back to the book of Allah under all circumstances. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's peace and blessing be upon his final messenger, <clears throat> Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his beloved, his chosen, his last chosen messenger and prophet, and the one uh, who uh, made things clear, uh, clarified the message of Allah, the message of God in a way uh, that it is suitable for people of all different levels of knowledge and all different levels of faith. Uh, and we, we will see in this uh, presentation how um, people were affected by his, people were impacted. People were impacted by, by his character. Uh, people were impacted by his mannerism and and people continue to be impacted when they study his his life so in the life of the prophet sallallahu we find different incidents several incidents from the outset that caused the prophet sallallahu the prophet muhammad sallallahu to grieve so i will share some of those incidents inshallah ta'ala in brief and then we will enter in a little bit of more detail into the year, into the into the years, the tenth, the tenth and eleventh year of prophethood, uh, which which um, from the month of Rajab, which we are in, uh, the month of Rajab, uh, and the year of grief, and pr leading leading up to, leading up to, the the relief from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Uh, where Allah reassures the Prophet Sallallahu of his wisdom, of his ability, of his qudra. So we find in some of the incidents, in some of the incidents uh, that whenever the Prophet Sallallahu grieved or, or, or suffered, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will reassure him with what? With revelation, with the Qur'an. So it's something for us to remember that we have this Qur'an now, right? That we have this Qur'an and we have to go back to it and search for that comfort and that peace through the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it was related on the authority of Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala who, who said that verily Al-Walid ibn Mughira prepared some food for Quraysh and he gathered them and while, while they were eating, he said, what do you say about this man? What do you say about this man? Is he a magician? Uh, should Can we call him a soothsayer? Can we uh, 
call him a poet, right? Uh, or let's just call him Asatir al Awali. Let's just call him a uh, magic of the old, right? And they agreed. Let's call it magic of the old. And when this news re reached the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he, he covered his head and wrapped himself up, right? He, he grieved. He grieved and he covered himself up. He wrapped himself up and, and then Allah revealed what well, some of our scholars state that it is the second revelation after Iqra Bismi Rabbik Alladhi Khalaq. So what revelation is this? Is ayah 1 to 7. Allah talks to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he says, Ya ayyuhal muddathir qum fa'anthir wa rabbaka fa'kabbir wa thiyabaka fa'tahhir وَالْلُجْزَ فَهْجُرْ وَلَا تَمْنُمْ تَسْتَكْثِرْ وَلِرَبِّكَ فَاصْبِرْ So Allah says, O oh, you enveloped in a garment, arise and warn and magnify. Magnify your Lord. Purify your garments and keep away from the false idols and give things in order to have more. And for your Lord, wali rabbika fasbir. And for your Lord, in, sincerely for your Lord, be patient, persevere, endure, endure what's coming your way. So this is the reason. So when the Prophet ﷺ felt that his people rejected him, he grieved. And Allah immediately supported him with, with, with revelation from the Qur'an. Then we have another, another incident where Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu also relates that when the Qur'an was, when the Qur'an was being revealed to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu wasallam, Jibreel alayhi salam delayed coming for a number of years. And on that occasion, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was affected by this. He was affected by this. And the, the idolaters began to say, the Lord has abandoned him. Then Allah revealed, مَا وَدَّعَكَ رَبُّكَ وَمَا قَلَى And your Lord has neither forsaken you, nor does he hate you. So this is the reason for revelation of Surah ad duha The Prophet was affected because of the delay of revelation and how the idol worshippers began to use that as a means of, of, of getting the upper hand. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed these ayats saying, Your Lord has not forgotten you or or forsaken you then we go to another surah where uh, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam it was revealed by the al as ibn wa'il whenever the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam will be mentioned in a company they would say leave him indeed don't worry about him he is a man that would not be remembered because he, he has no descendants. He has no descendants. He will be cut off. His message, after him, no one will carry this message. No one will. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed. Allah revealed. Inna a'tainaka al-kawthar. Fasalli li rabbika wanhar. Inna shani'aka huwa al-abtar. Allah says, and he who hates you, Allah says, Allah revealed, we have given you the abundance. So turn to your Lord in prayer. Turn to your Lord in prayer and sacrifice. And verily those, verily those who hate you will be cut off. 
Verily, those who hate you will be cut off. My dear brothers and sisters, we find in the Qur'an, when we study the meaning of the Qur'an, and I would highly recommend for us to constantly, as we read the Qur'an, to constantly strive to seek understanding of the context of the verses of Allah. What I mean by context, there is a science that is called, the science is called Asbab and Nuzul. Asbab and Nuzul is the reason for revelation, right? The story behind the verses. So I ask my, my dear brothers and sisters to please constantly, when you look at a verse of Allah, at a verse in the Quran, yes, read it, benefit spiritually, but always get into the habit of, of checking your conclusions by going to the explanations of the Quran, by the tafsirs of the Quran, as they are, uh, as they are many, alhamdulillah. And, and we, and we can also if, uh, ask, you know, our, our scholars and, and our imams, uh, for guidance in that process, uh, for direction. Uh, so when we look at in this current month that we're in, in the month of Rajab, we find that in the month of Rajab, in the tenth year of the of the prophethood, the ten the tenth year of prophethood, Abu Talib fell ill and passed away. So Abu Talib fell ill and passed away. And in the story, the Prophet Sallallahu when, when the when Abu Talib was in his deathbed, the Prophet Sallallahu entered upon the room and says, Ayya ammi qul la ilaha illallah kalimatun, kalimatun uhajju laka biha indallah. He said, Oh my uncle, Oh my uncle, say, La ilaha illallah. There's no God worthy of worship except Allah. Say this 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 testimony and, and I will bear witness for you. I will bear I will bear testimony for you, you know, in front of Allah. But his brothers encouraged him to keep the religion of his father, of Abdul Muttalib. And he decided to. And the Prophet Sallallahu immediately said, I will constantly seek forgiveness for you. And then Allah revealed some verses stating that uh, what are the proper guidance, you know, for who we seek forgiveness and for who we don't seek forgiveness. And then Allah reminded the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi You do not guide whom you love. Verily you, O Muhammad, do not guide whom you love. It is Allah who guides whom he wills. Abu Talib was a good man. Abu Talib uh, uh, protected and served the Prophet ﷺ for 40 years. Abu Talib was to care of him in his childhood. Abu Talib sacrificed and protected him. Uh, Abu Talib, you know, served him, Right? And still, Allah tested the Prophet ﷺ by not giving um, Abu Talib the ability to, 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 to bear witness and say the testimony. Two months after the death of Abu Talib, I, Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha, Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha, uh, passed away and she was 65 years old and the Prophet ﷺ lived with her the Prophet ﷺ, uh, lived with her for 25 years subhanallah they shared their toils their trials for 25 years Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha Umm al -Mu'minin the mother of the believers, was Khadija was the, the supporter. Khadija was the, the, the one that, that supported the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Amanat bi 
Hayna kafara bi al-nas. She believed in me when the people rejected me. Sadaqatani hayna kadhabani al-nas. She 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 embraced is the message when people rejected it. She comforted me with her wealth when people withheld wealth from me. And she blessed, she by Allah's decree gave me children and no one else did. Khadija radiallahu anha was the, the beloved of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And she had such a great status that she was she was a, a when the Prophet ﷺ was in the age of forty, and he was receiving about to receive revelation and receive, and he was in the cave contemplating. Khadija would go up in the mountain with a vessel of food and a drink, and Jibril ﷺ will give the will give the the heads up to the Prophet ﷺ saying that Khadija is on her way. And then Jibreel alayhi salam said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa give her the salams, give her the salams and, uh, uh, from Allah, give her the salams from her Lord, and give her the glad tidings of paradise, uh, of paradise, of, of a palace, of a, of a palace in paradise with jewels. And there is, and in paradise where there is no toils and there is no noise. Brothers and sisters, these two painful events are what are what um, are considered the year of the year of grief. Allah reminds the believers. Allah reminds the believers. That Allah says, Do you think that you will enter paradise without such trials? As came to uh, as those that came to those that passed before you, they were afflicted with severe poverty, with ailments, and were so shaken that even the messengers, even the messengers, and those who believed alongside them. They would say, "Mata Nasrullah, ala ina Nasr, inna Nasrullah qareeb." When will the help of Allah come? When will the help of Allah come? And Allah says, "Certainly, yes, verily, the help of Allah is near. Verily, the help of Allah is near." Brothers and sisters, when we look at these stories, we look at how did the Prophet react to the, to, during this year of grief? Am al-Huzn, the year of grief. How did the Prophet Sallallahu did he give up life? Did he stop functioning? Did he forget about his responsibility uh, towards Allah, towards humanity, did, did, was he, um, did he, did he stop, right? So I want to share uh, something with you, inshallah ta'ala, about what the Prophet Sallallahu did after the year of grief, inshallah ta'ala, or after, after he experienced, after he experienced that tragedy in the month of Rajab, right? In the month of Rajab and in the month of Ramadan. Because Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha passed away two months after Abu Talib and it was in the month of Ramadan. So look at that experience that the Prophet sallallahu had in Ramadan where his, where Khadija, his wife, passed away radiallahu ta'ala anha. Brothers and sisters, 
the Messenger of Allah وسلم, after the death of Abu Talib and the death of Khadija عنها, immediately in the month of Shawwal so Khadija, uh, Abu Talib died in the month of Rajab in the 10th year of the prophethood. Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha died in the month of Ramadan in, in the 10th year of prophethood. In the following month, after the, after the passing of Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha, in the following month, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam saw that there was no use or, 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 or there was no response from the Meccans towards his message. So he decided to go towards Ta'if. And when he went towards Ta'if, he spent 10 days talking to different leaders, talking to different people, to the point that they, the leaders began to order their kids to throw stones at the Prophet ﷺ. And when the Prophet ﷺ got away, the Prophet ﷺ made this dua. He said, Oh Allah, to you alone I make my complaint of my helplessness and paucity of my resources and my insignificance before mankind. You are the most merciful of the mercifuls. You are the Lord, you are the Lord of the helpless. And the weak. You are the Lord of the helpless and the weak. O Lord of mine. O Lord of mine. Into whose hand would you. Would you suddenly. Frown upon me. Into whose hands. Would you abandon me. And. Into the hands of. The unsympathetic. Distant relatives. Who would suddenly frown at me or the enemies who have been given control over my affairs but if your wrath does not fall on me if your wrath O oh Allah does not fall on me then there is nothing for me to worry about then there is nothing for me to worry about so the Prophet ﷺ was really concerned about the pleasure of Allah. And he said, I seek protection in the light of your countenance, which illuminates, illuminates the heavens and dispels the darkness and which controls all affairs in this world as well as in the hereafter. May it never be that I, show, that I should incur your wrath or that you should be wrathful to me and there is no power and there is no might except with by yours yours alone so the prophet وسلم, when he got away from the, the the stones and blood coming from his body and he went to this this hill, he immediately bowed down to pray and made sujood and made this dua. The son of Rabia, Rabia's two sons, Rabia was a wealthy Meccan, and Rabia, Rabia was a wealthy Meccan, and his son, his sons sent a Christian servant. And this Christian servant was the name of, his name was um, Abdas. So this Christian servant, he was sent and to bring him some grapes. And the Prophet ﷺ immediately said, he grabbed the grapes as a gift and he said, Bismillah. And when he said Bismillah, Abdas said, do you also, do you in your religion do you also say say these words? And the Prophet ﷺ said yes, and he said, 
And Adas said, I come from Nineveh. And Nineveh, and the Prophet ﷺ said, Oh, then you belong to the people of Yunus, salam, Prophet Yunus. And Adas was, was, was shocked. And then when the Prophet ﷺ told them about his message, Adas grabbed his hand, kissed it, and, 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 and paid homage and honor to that message. And the leaders became upset. Like, what are you doing? Have you lost your mind? And he said, None on the earth is better than he. And he has revealed to me the truth, which only a prophet can do. So, the, so he, he accepted the message. Subhanallah. After all that pain, a month after the passing of Abu Talib and Khadija, a month after, in the month of Shawwal, the Prophet goes out to invite people to Islam. He gets stoned and gets abused and finally turns, get, frees himself and, and, and prays. And then Allah guides someone else besides the ones that the Prophet ﷺ was trying to call. The Prophet ﷺ was heartbroken and depressed. And he, he was heartbroken that the people didn't accept the message. So he returned back to Mecca. And when he reached an area called Qar al-Manazil, right? Allah sent the angel Jibreel with the angel of mountains. And he said, will you want us to crush this city? The Prophet Wasallam, he said, I would rather that, no, leave them because maybe their progeny will accept this message, will accept this message of oneness of Allah. The Prophet Wasallam. When he went to an area and he was and he was praying, he was engaged in prayer. Allah sent him. You see how Allah says, You do not guide whom you want. Allah guides whom he wills. So the Prophet, he Allah says, And remember when we sent towards you Najran, right? Nafaran, Nafaran min al jinn. يستمعون القرآن فلما حضروا قالوا أنصتوا When Allah sent a group and nafaran means a group of three or more people from the jinns and they were listening to the Quran فلما حضروا حضروه when they arrived, when they were present, listening, they said, "Qalu, ansitu, keep silent, listen silently." And when it was finished, when it was finished, then they immediately went to the people, and they said, "We heard a book, the Quran sent down after Musa, which came with." Uh, no other has come like it before, and it guides to the truth and to the straight path. Our people respond to a lost caller and believe in Him. He, Allah, will forgive you your sins and will save you from a torment of the fire. So we see, brothers and sisters, that Allah is the Ultimately, Allah is the guide. So the Prophet ﷺ had this hardship, right, with his own people. But then Allah guides someone from Nineveh, right, from the people of Yunus. And then Allah guides some of the jinns to Islam, right? And then in the following, in the year of Dhul, in the in the month of Dhul Qada, the same year, the tenth year of the prophethood, the Prophet ﷺ resumed his activities and started to make da'wah. In this effort, he 
he uh, invited to Islam and accepted Islam, Suwayd ibn Samit, Iyas ibn Mu'ad, Abu Dhar al-Ghifari, and Tufayl, Tufayl ibn Amr al-Dawsi. These great Sahabis also accepted Islam. Now, when we look at this, this was in the this was in the tenth year, in the eleventh year, right? In the in the in the tenth year. In in the last days in Mecca, right? So the tenth, eleventh year was when when this in was going on. In the in the last days in Mecca, the Prophet being boycotted, being rejected, right? The Prophet fell asleep and Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah carried, Allah sent, Allah sent a buraq, Allah sent the angel Jibreel with the buraq and and was he was taken in that night, in the night journey, the Isra, the night journey from Masjid al Haram ila Masjid al Aqsa, from, Me from Mecca to al Aqsa. And Jibreel, the, then when the Prophet arrived, arrived in al Aqsa, he tied the, the Buraq. And and immediately he he prayed he prayed and led the prophets in in prayer. After that, in the same, uh, he took him to the heavens in the same burak. When they reached the first heaven, and we're not gonna, we're not going to get into all the the details. Pertaining to that, uh, but when he came to the first, uh, to the first heaven, he saw the guardian, and he knocked. Jibril alayhi salam knocked on the door, and when the door opens up, he saw Adam alayhi salam, right, the father of mankind, and the Prophet sallam saluted him, assalamu alaikum, and then the, and and he said, he said, oh. He gave him he gave him salam salam alaikum. Then Jibreel alayhi salam ascended to the second heaven, and there he saw Yahya and Isa alayhi salam, John and Jesus, peace be upon him. And then the, they greeted them and, and they returned the salutation. Afterwards, when the, they went to the third heaven, then they saw Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam and they greeted them and Yusuf alayhi salam responded. When they reached the fourth heaven, there they found Prophet Idris alayhi salam, and he greeted them and he greeted them. And then he was carried to the fifth heaven, and there he met Prophet Arun alayhi salam, and he greeted him and he responded to the greeting. And in the sixth heaven, he met Prophet Musa alayhi salam, and he greeted him and later returned the salutation and expressed faith in his prophethood. And the Prophet ﷺ, when leaving Musa, Musa began to weep. And he asked, what's the reason? And Musa answered that he was weeping because he led, because he witnessed a man sent after him who was able to lead more people to paradise than him. And when they reached the seventh heaven, there he met Prophet Ibrahim ﷺ, and he greeted him. And he returned the salutation and he said, I express the, the faith in his prophethood. Then he was carried to Sidrat al-Muntaha, Muntaha, the, the remote, the remote low, low tree, which is like, and then, and then he was shown, he was shown Bayt al-Ma'mur, right? When he was shown Bayt al-Ma'mur, then Bayt al Ma'mur, which is like the Kaaba, 70,000 angels frequented, you know, and once a group of angels pass, you know, none of them return again until the day of resurrection. So he witnessed, he witnessed this, and then the Lord revealed to him 
Allah revealed. This is this is the the one of the most important parts of this presentation. After all this hardship, after all this hardship that the Prophet ﷺ experienced, Walaikum Salam, Sheikh Dr. Rihabi, Walaikum Salam, Imam Ahmed. You know, after all this hardship, looking at the tenth year of the, uh, the uh, of the prophethood, where the Prophet ﷺ lost his uncle, his dear uncle Abu Talib, and who took care of him, who raised him. Who, who loved them uh, as a son. And then two months later, in the month of Ramadan, he loses his wife Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha in the same year, right? Now, after that, after the loss of, 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 of Abu Talib and Khadija, the Prophet sallam immediately, the following month, in the month of Shawwal, immediately got to work because the priority was the message of Allah, conveying the message of Allah towards uh, to the people. So th then we have the story of Taif and the Prophet ﷺ being stoned and the Prophet ﷺ being concerned about the displeasure of Allah above the pain and suffering that he faced and he experienced in the way of Allah. Following that, the Prophet ﷺ returned back to Mecca after trying to invite the leaders and trying to invite the people of Ta'if to Islam, but there were, it was it was to no avail. The Prophet ﷺ returns back, and on the way back, what happens? No, when when he prayed, when he prayed, when he got away from being tortured, then we have the story of Adas. And how he accepts Islam that when he when when he gave him grapes and the Prophet Sallallahu said Bismillah and he was impacted by just the fact that the Prophet said Bismillah in the name of Allah. Look at that, Subhanallah. Sometimes we get ashamed and we feel embarrassed to stay, say in the name of Allah, to say Bismillah, to say phrases that were taught by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the Prophet ﷺ said Bismillah and Adas. It, it impacted Adas to the point of, 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 of leading him to being guided. And the Prophet ﷺ then when he continued going to Mecca for the sake of going back to make da'wah, on the way he prays and Allah sends Nafarun min al-jinn, a group of jinns. A group of jinns, three or more, and they and and when the prophet was praying they heard him recite quran and when they heard him recite quran and they and they and they gathered together quietly qalu they said ansitu keep silent right and then when they heard the quran without being explained by the prophet when they heard the quran they accepted its message and they went back to their people. They went back to their people to call them to Islam. The Prophet didn't have to teach him, teach the jinns a da'wah, uh, you know, a, 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 a workshop to, uh, to make da'wah. But they were impacted and when they were impacted by heart, they immediately knew that they had to share this message. Now, when we come to the point that Allah relieved the Prophet ﷺ by showing him, showing him signs, showing him Allah's qudra, Allah's ability. So therefore Allah sends Jibreel with the Burak, and then we have the story that we reached to, the story of Al-Isra wal Miraj. The Prophet ﷺ the Prophet ﷺ is brought to pass the seventh heaven, meet Adam meets you meet um after Adam meets Zachariah and Yahya, right? Meet meet Yahya, 
Yahya and Isa alayhi salam. Right? So you have Adam in the second heaven, Yahya and Isa alayhi salam. In the third heaven, Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam. In the fourth, in the fourth heaven, Prophet Idris alayhi salam. In the fifth heaven, Prophet Harun alayhi salam. In the sixth heaven, Prophet Musa alayhi salam. And in the seventh heaven, Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. When, when the Prophet sallam, was taken by Jibril, they reached Sidrat al Muntaha, the utmost boundary, the low tree, which is the utmost boundary, meaning that Jibril cannot pass this boundary. Therefore, Jibril tells the Prophet, You are on your own. Then Allah tells the Prophet, sallam, We have ordered you to pray, we have ordered your, your followers. To pray 50 prayers. 50 prayers. And the Prophet وسلم, as he was returning back, Musa asked him, So what did you get from your Lord? And the Prophet told him, We were ordered to pray 50 prayers. He said, Go back. Your followers cannot maintain these prayers. Go back to your Lord and ask for remission in number. Ask for it to be less. And the Prophet turned, turned toward Jibreel alayhi They returned back. And to make a long story short, the Prophet kept going back to Allah, went from 50 prayers to 40 prayers to 30 prayers to 25 prayers, 10 prayers, 5 prayers, to the point that then he said, I cannot ask Allah for, for more. So the point of this, brothers and sisters, is that Allah, Allah tests us, Allah tries us. <coughs> Allah tries us. Allah tries us to see how patient we are. Allah is the all-knower. Allah is the almighty. Allah is the all-wise, right? To Allah we return. We come from Allah, and to Allah we return. We say, like it says in Surah Taha, from it you're created, to it you return, and from it you're brought back to life. So my dear brothers and sisters, when the Prophet Wasallam, this that the Prophet re received prior to the Hijrah was... Prior to the Hijrah was prayer, was Salah. So we find we find two main points in this presentation. Number one, I shared some of the ayats like Surat al mudaftir and the reason for it being relieved revealed was because the Prophet ﷺ was being called a a soothsayer or a, a magician of old and he grieved because his people didn't believe in him and Allah revealed Ya Yuhal Muddathir Surat Al Muddathir the first seven verses of Surat Al Muddathir Surat Al Duha revelation stopped the Prophet Sallallahu grieved and was worried right and they started making fun of him saying your Lord has abandoned you and Allah revealed uh, uh, Surah Wadduha Wallayli da saja ma wadda'aka rabbuka wa ma qala Your Lord has not, uh, is not displeased with you and he, he has not forgotten you. Right? Surah Al-Kawthar they, they, the, the leaders are saying Disregard him. He has no children. He has no, he's not going to have no descendants. So nobody will carry his message. Right? Because we find that the prophets passed down the message. You have Zachariah, alayhi salam. His son was Yahya, alayhi salam. Then you have Ibrahim, alayhi salam. His son of Ismail. And his son is Haq. Whose son is Yaqub. Whose son is Yusuf, alayhi salam. So it's passed down by lineage, right? And by, by, by family. But here, they said the Prophet does not have no sons. So the, there's no need to worry. 
right? He's going to be cut off. His message will be cut off. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, Inna We have given you this, this, this river. Fasalli li rabbika wanhar. So pray to your Lord. Pray to your Lord and sacrifice. Inna shani akahu al abatar. Verily, those who hate you will be cut off. My dear brothers and sisters, the reason of, of sharing these stories is because we have, we have, as our beloved Prophet said, in the book of Allah, two things that the Prophet left behind, the book of Allah and his way and his sunnah. And we find in, in when we study the Quran, we find that the Quran re reminds us of these different incidents and stories which show us the humanity of the Prophet Sallallahu how he felt pain, how he suffered, how he had to endure for the sake of Allah, how he had to endure for the sake of Allah and not losing sight in the message of Allah, not losing sight in the responsibility to convey, to share the goodness of, of, of the teachings of Islam. So I remind myself and you brothers and sisters, number one, number one is to always try to look through the lens of the Quran. Look at the book of Allah, read it and contemplate it. Read it and contemplate its meaning. But don't just contemplate without a reference, a source. Make sure that you have a proper book that has the explanation of the Qur'an so that you can study its meaning and study the context of the verses and enhance your knowledge of the book of Allah. Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu had a student by the name of Mujahid ibn Jabr. And Mujahid ibn Jabr studied the Quran with Ibn Abbas radiallahu Completely, he read the Quran three times. No, I'm sorry, 30 times. Completely, just reading the Quran from beginning to end. And then studying its meaning, stopping at every word, at every verse, he would ask Ibn Abbas for the meaning and Ibn Abbas will explain the Qur'an completely three times. So he read the Qur'an 30 times to Ibn Abbas, to a teacher. And he also studied its meaning and the context three times with his teacher Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the cousin of the Prophet sallallahu So my advice is to use this time to enhance your knowledge of the book of Allah, to seek direction on how to acquire that, that knowledge. That's number one. Number two, to, safe, to safeguard your prayers. As Allah tells us that we should seek help. وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ Seek help. Seek help and patience in prayer. So my dear brothers and sisters, as I come to a conclusion, two points that I mentioned. One is rely, uh, reading the book of Allah and studying its meaning, number one. And number two, safeguarding your prayers. And number three, my dear brothers and sisters, continue to, to pay heed to the reality that we're currently living in. And, and, and intend that bi ta'ala, as we get through this hardship, that inshallah, that we 
make the intention to be committed to Allah, to be committed to the houses of Allah that currently are 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 are, are not accessible because of safety reasons, not because of force or oppression or wrongdoing, but because our organization, ISGH, because our scholars have advised, because the CDC has advised, because our local government, right, our government has advised. And as Muslims, we, we fear in Allah, strive to follow the rules and follow the advice of the experts, of the, of the knowledgeable, of the specialists. So we ask Allah to give us patience during this time. We ask Allah to bless us with wisdom in understanding how to deal with this matter, with this situation. We ask, we ask Allah to bless and reward those who tirelessly are working for the good of the community and for the good of society at large. Ask Allah to bless and reward the first, to bless and the, the first responders, to bless their families, to bless them with comfort and safety. We ask Allah to bless those who are sick, to bless them with healing. We ask Allah to protect us. As the Prophet ﷺ taught us, Allah ma'afini fi badani. O Allah, O Allah, make my grant safety, right, to my body. Allah ma'afini fi sami'i. O Allah, protect, preserve my, my hearing. Allah ma'afini fi basari. O Allah, preserve my eyes. La ilaha illa ant. There is no God worthy of worship except you. We ask Allah to grant us safety, security, and protection. And I will conclude with the advice of the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ, because I know that we have limited opportunities to, you know, and we are rec we are advised to choose the proper timing for going out uh, and safely. Uh, so we we make the dua of the Prophet وسلم, and we take safety measures. So so we make the dua of the Prophet وسلم, which is uh, when exiting your home, say Bismillah tawakkaltu ala Allah wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah in the name of Allah Right? Bismillah. Tawakkaltu ala Allah. I put my trust in Allah. Wala hawla wala quwwata illa billah. And there's no might and power except with Allah. The, Pro the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, When a person says that dua, you have been guided. It is said to him, You have been guided. You have been protected. You have been defended. And then the shaitan will come and say, you know, uh, they, they come and have a conversation amongst themselves. And, and they said, we can't affect him because he is protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So brothers and sisters, make that dua every time you exit your home. Say, Bismillah. Tawakkaltu ala Allah. Wa la hawla wa la quwata illa billah. In the name of Allah, I put my trust in Allah. And there's no might and power except with Allah. And last but not least, brothers and sisters, when you go put gas, make sure that you that you wipe the hand the, 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 the gas the gas pump. Make sure that you wipe it. Make sure that you wash your hands. Make sure that when you when you come inside your house you you also do the proper hygiene. When you go to the market, to the supermarket, make sure that when you grab items that you also you know wash your hands afterwards and don't touch your face. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you uh, the ability to remember and, and, and bless you and protect you, protect your families. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant our community members, our leaders, who uh, uh, the administration of ISGA to strive in day in, day out for the sake of the community. And please pay heed to the advice.
brothers and sisters, please pay heed to the advice of our leadership, of our scholars, of the CDC, and our local government. May Allah bless you. May Allah forgive us. May Allah forgive us our shortcomings. ربنا أتنا في الدنيا حسنا وفي الآخرة حسنا وقينا ذاب النار وصلى الله مبارك على سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وآخر الدعوان الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته